Welcome to my scientifically informed insider look at mental health topics. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, how do negative life experiences contribute to the development of cluster C personality disorders? Now when we talk about cluster C personality disorders, we're talking about three specific personality disorders listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. And of course the manual divides up personality disorders into three clusters, clusters A, B, and C. And cluster C contains avoidant, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorders. Now there are a number of theories about what could cause these personality disorders. And it's important when we talk about causation though to start with this idea of causation versus association. A lot of times with mental disorders, including personality disorders, what we're really talking about is some sort of association that's been identified between some sort of construct, like a genetic or environmental construct, and the development of a disorder. Association or correlation is different than causation. Now I'm using a study that was published in 2011 by Bergen Ayer and colleagues to answer this question about negative life experiences and cluster C personality disorders. So this study looked at a number of other studies. So it was a review of a number of studies that have been done on possible causative elements for cluster C personality disorders. Now, when we talk about cluster C personality disorders and personality disorders in general, we know that genetics appear to play a part, but we don't know the exact contribution. A lot of times for a number of the personality disorders, it's speculated that the contribution of genetics is around 50%, for some personality disorders, it's as high as 60%, but really we're not sure. Here I'm looking at negative life experiences, so of course I'm looking more at the environmental as opposed to genetic. Now in terms of environmental causes, there are a number of theories that have been proposed over the years. Attachment theorists focus on early relationship quality. Psychodynamic theorists focus on profound dysfunction and conflicts, again in early life and cognitive theorists focus on maladaptive schemas. These are distorted views about how people see themselves, others, and the world. In terms of this particular review, the cognitive elements were focused on more than attachment or psychodynamic. All three of these schools of thought, though, share this one part in common, which is whatever happened that leads to personality disorders, specifically cluster C personality disorders, tends to occur early. And we conceptualize the negative life experience almost all the time we're talking about childhood experiences. Now sometimes the term negative life experience is used interchangeably with negative life event. And I don't really see a problem with this normally. If we want to get specific though in terms of what potential difference there is between those two terms, it's that an experience is what somebody perceives. An event is what actually happens. So its interpretation versus an actual event. Now again, this is a distinction that not everybody makes, but it's important to recognize, especially when talking about cognitive theory, that it's really all about perception and interpretation. What actually happens is secondary to what people perceive is happening when we think about the causality or contribution to development of mental disorders. Another key part to understand here is how genetics and negative life experiences interact to potentially lead to personality disorders. So this can be straightforward, like a genetic vulnerability to a particular personality disorder, like avoid personality disorder, and then some sort of environmental stressor that activates that vulnerability. We could also see a vulnerability genetically to behave in a certain way that may result in creating a negative life experience for somebody else. So it's not always straightforward about how genetics and environmental factors, including negative life experiences, combine and interact. So what do we know in general about personality disorders and negative life experiences? Well, we know that individuals with personality disorders tend to report a disproportionately high number of negative life experiences. It's important to keep in mind with this, though, that most individuals who report negative life experiences never go on to develop a personality disorder or even any mental disorder. The cluster C personality disorders specifically actually have the lowest association with negative life experiences of all three clusters of personality disorders. So let's take a look specifically at the results here of this review in terms of cluster C personality disorders. 
So for avoidant personality disorder, the negative life experiences that were identified would be physical and sexual abuse, emotional abuse, and emotional neglect, bullying, which of course is a type of emotional abuse and physical abuse, low expression of parental affection, and a lack of nurturing. So all of these different negative life experiences were associated with the development of avoidant personality disorder. So if we look at this from the perspective of what type of schema would develop, what type of schema is consistent with avoidant personality disorder, it's one where the world appears harmful and hostile. Now with dependent personality disorder, the negative life experiences associated with this disorder were physical and sexual abuse, so this is shared with avoidant personality disorder, a controlling family environment, and a rule-based family environment. So the schema that develops here with dependent personality disorder is there's a need to rely on others because of low personal efficacy. Now, when we talk about the last personality disorder in cluster C, obsessive compulsive personality disorder, we see that the relationship with negative life experiences here is actually quite weak. Some studies show that some negative life experiences may contribute to the development of obsessive compulsive personality disorder, but most studies show no relationship. So in the studies that do show a relationship, we see abuse in general, sexual abuse, and verbal abuse. But again, those are just some of the studies. Most studies don't show any relationship between negative life experiences and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. So overall, what can we learn from this study? Well, avoidant and dependent personality disorders have a stronger association than obsessive compulsive personality disorder in terms of negative life experiences. And we look at negative life experiences that all three of these personality disorders have in common, we only see sexual abuse. Although, of course, physical abuse is shared by avoidant and dependent personality disorders. Now, when considering these results and looking at this particular study, which of course reviewed other studies, as I mentioned, it's important to recognize that with a number of the studies that were reviewed, there are a lot of different methodology problems in terms of the research. This is fairly common for cluster C personality disorders. We don't see a lot of research on cluster C personality disorders to start with. But also the way that we collect information for these types of studies has certain problems. For example, a lot of these studies depend on the self-report of negative life experiences. And because the individual making this report, of course, would have a personality disorder, we see that these reports would be influenced by distortions in self-perception, they would be influenced by the particular mood state at that time, and also they would be influenced by difficulties in memory that anybody would have regardless of the presence or absence of a personality disorder. Recalling negative life experiences from childhood can be difficult for anybody. So in terms of clinical practice, what can we learn from this study? Well, we know that the assessment of negative life experiences is an important part of forming treatment planning when treating personality disorders, including cluster C personality disorders. Just because there are methodology problems and just because a lot of the associations aren't clear doesn't mean that negative life experiences aren't important in clinical practice. I hope you found this description of negative life experiences and cluster C personality disorders to be interesting. Thanks for watching.